development of the ice cream robot continues with whipped cream. Show me on your original drawing. That was the whipped cream, right? Mm -hmm. But first we wanted to go over a few things we're keeping in mind as we design the robot and all the dispensers for all the different toppings. So first, easy to refill. We're going to attempt to use the original container when possible. So far with the sprinkles and the whipped cream, we've been able to do that. Um, for the chocolate syrup and maybe the cherries, we may have to design something else, but we're keeping in mind how quickly we're able to refill it. Because if we're taking this to a party where a bunch of people want to use it, we don't want to have to have a whole bunch of time where we spend refilling the machine, keeping people waiting. And another thing that we're trying to keep in mind, Clara? Is it's easy to clean. So anything we use for the toppings, we want to either be able to remove and dispose of, like in the case of the whipped cream can, um, or be able to easily um, wipe it down and hopefully not have to you know, make too much of a mess, keep the toppings going on to the Sundays rather than everywhere else. And then last, easy to transport. And that's why we've actually started making it longer and thinner rather than round or square, uh, because it's, we think it's gonna be easier to fit something longer and thinner in the car, maybe between seats or on the floor. So onto the whipped cream dispenser. We're gonna use this type of whipped cream that comes in a pressurized can, but first we have to figure out how to actuate the can. Do you guys know what actuate means? Like, like, pull something forward? Yeah, so usually when somebody says actuate, they mean to operate something or move something. So usually it's associated with physically moving some part of a device to, to make it work. Before, um, we have a few design ideas in mind. Before we can start narrowing them down, we need to figure out how much force and about how far do you have to push a nozzle of a whipped cream can to actually make it actuate. So that's one of the first tests we're gonna do, and it's also gonna be the first test of how well we can get a whipped cream can to fit into some kind of holder that we model and, and probably 3D print. All right, so how much force do you think it's gonna to take to dispense the whipped cream? Pounds, how many pounds? Two pounds. Uh, I think like two to five, yeah. Two pounds. Okay. No, five to ten. Okay, ready? Mm So now that we know how much force it takes, we're just gonna round up to about five pounds. So let's say it takes five pound, F stands for? Force. Force, five pound force. Sometimes people leave the F off, but we're really talking about, it takes about five pound force to dispense or actuate the whipped cream. So we can start thinking about how to make a device to do that for us. And we have this kind of initial design that we've thought of. Um, What's not shown in this, we, and we can show this a little bit in our actual um, part that we made, is a motor is gonna spin this smaller gear. But just to make the math a little bit easy, that this motor um, produces a torque of about five inch pounds. So torque is equal to a force times some distance or displacement. Um, and our motor can produce about five inch pounds. So to make the math easy for us, and this is approximately correct for the one that we've made, the distance between the tip of this gear and the center of rotation is about one inch, which means if we can produce a torque of about five inch pounds, the force that this gear can apply to the teeth of the other gear is about, ten pounds. no, not 10 pounds. So we only have one inch and we can make five inch pounds. So if we divide five inch pounds by one inch, five divided by one is five. five. Oh, so we can make about five pounds oh, yeah. of that's, force. That's still five. Okay. At the, right at the place where this gear meets that gear. And because this gear is just gonna react the same amount of force out, that for, this gear pushes back with five pounds. But, this gear, and it's only a small section of this gear is shown, but its rotational center is all the way over here. 
And so for the moment, let's just assume, again, to make the math easy, um, and this is pretty close to what we've actually made, that this long distance all the way here is about five inches. And so remember, if torque is force times distance, what's the torque on this gear? If we recalculate it, so we have torque equals- 25. Right, because we have five pounds times a much larger distance, five inches, equals 25 inch pounds. And we're not getting something for nothing. This gear, um, this let's select the small gear first. Let's say we're rotating pretty fast with this small gear. It's gonna take a lot longer to make this big gear rotate because if there's only 12 teeth on the small gear, and there's happens to be 68 teeth on the large gear. That's a little over five times as many teeth on the big gear versus the small gear, which means it's gonna take five times of spinning the small gear to make the big gear spin around one time and a little over five times. And so what we're trading is we're getting a lot more torque as we go slower. And this one produces a lot less torque, but can go faster. So that's typically the trade-off you make when you're using gears. Here's how we're getting a lot of force at the whipped cream. The whipped cream is actually gonna come right through this hole here, the tip of the whipped cream uh, can. And so if that's only one inch from this rotational center point of the big gear, how much force can we apply to the whipped cream? Because remember, torque equals force times distance. And to calculate the initial torque of this big gear, we said five times five is 25. But now we know the torque. The torque is 25 inch pounds. And our new distance is one inch. So our new force is gonna be the 25 inch pounds divided by one inch, which is 25 pounds. So because our gear is almost five times as large and we happen to use this same distance between the rotational center and the whipped cream as the small gear, it ends up working out that we just get um, five times the amount of force to dispense the whipped cream. So we've actually put together <clears throat> an initial concept of this. So you can see the gears that we were just showing. This is the small gear that's gonna get rotated by a stepper motor. That's actually already installed onto the part that we've made. And the whipped cream, using the same holder that we used for our force test, just gets inserted through the top. And when the small gear rotates, it's going to push the whipped cream off to the side. And we're getting about a five times multiplying factor for force. And so this little stepper motor should have plenty of force to actuate the whipped cream. Go for it. So on our other whipped cream dispenser, we realized that every time we turn the power on, we're not gonna know where the motor is. So can you tell me what did we just add to try to help us find a home position or the same starting position every time we turn the power on? LED light. And what was this guy down here? A sensor. Yeah, do you remember what kind of sensor? It was a Hall effect sensor. And what does it sense when something is nearby, but what is nearby? Magnet. Right, so we've added this tiny little magnet to the gear tooth. And so you can try to go and rotate that. This little green LED tells us when the sensor is active. So rotate that until the magnet comes close to the sensor. So every time the magnet gets close to the sensor, you can see it's you know barely maybe coming toward the edge. This light will go on. Now if you keep rotating it past the sensor, Eventually the light goes off. You can see the magnet moved all the way over here. So we're gonna write a simple homing sequence in the software so that every time we turn the power on, even if it isn't perfectly centered, it's going to find the edges of the sensor and then find its home position.
Now we have the whipped cream mounted. We're gonna test it with some ice cream. So how do we control how much whipped cream we're gonna get? And what do we gotta do first when we turn the power on? We have to do the home sequence. So Tommy. Okay, so the home sequence, just make sure we start in the same position every time. Now, how do you control how much whipped cream you want? If it's towards the left, it's less whipped cream. And if it's toward the right, it's more whipped cream. So let's see, just a little bit of whipped cream. Okay, now try to turn that dial up a little bit and get a little bit more whipped cream. So eventually, someone's gonna be able to select how much they want of each tapping and then they're gonna press a single button and that bowl is gonna move from topping to topping. Right now they're just stationary, so we have to move the bowl to the next topping, which is sprinkles. We had that working in the last video, but now we also have that working with a knob to select how much um, you want of the sprinkles. So we also have to open that. So in the same way, you can turn that knob all the way to the left and get barely any sprinkles at all because it won't shake it for very long. Almost none. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can't even see it. Now turn it maybe down. somewhere in the middle, see how much we get there. Not bad. And then just try all the way. Oh, God.